Let's go over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, every trading day at Ord-Oracle.com. That's Ord-Oracle.com. Tim Ord, you got your rally How you here. Doing? Yeah, how's, how's, how's things going out there? Things um, are going good, man. Uh, you know, I mean... You know, it, it's so intriguing, Tim, because, you know, I got you on last week. The market was, you know, drifting lower, lower the last couple of days. But this is quite a rally, right? Yeah, well, actually, we, we can skip right to uh, that part. You know, instead of um, chart one, we can go to actually chart two and kind of um, actually this is uh, the old Weisskopf method. Um okay. You go to chart two. That's uh, the uh, SPY there. Okay. And I get, on the volume charts, I got two uh, red circles around um, some volume there. Yeah. So the first red circle is uh, March six. Okay. And and that was a high that day. It was March six. Market fell back down. Then market came back up on March twenty six. Is the second circle. And if you notice, it jumped above the previous high of March six. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it basically, I'm trying to point out that volume was much higher on March 26 when you jumped above the March 6 high, and uh, that's you know Weisskopf method. That's jumping the creek, I guess you might say. So if once you have a, a sign of strength, I guess through a previous high, then the previous high has become support. Uh, so uh, I drew a, a light pink area area across that line or where that was. So we we jumped above a previous high. Now previous highs become support. And we came back down, and I uh, sent you this chart early yesterday morning, so yes. it doesn't show really what the close was or what's doing it today. But we went right smack into that area, and what I didn't have on this chart, I do have it uh, the day before. Before uh, today's what Thursday? It'd be Tuesdays. Close. We had trend close of 1.35, uh, which is marked there, and we have a tick close of 517 down tick readings. I've done quite a bit of stuff with ticks and trend over the years, and you get a trend reading usually above 1.2, and a, a tick close below minus 200. There's a high probability you're going to make a low the same day as those readings do as to as, to as late as two days later. Well, it turns out that low was yesterday, pretty much right on target. And you always want, I always call those readings above 1.2 on the trend and a down tick reading below minus 200 panic readings. And panic always shows up at bottoms. And if you don't have panic readings, it's not a bottom. Well, that panic should have showed up right where that jump the creek uh, light pink area is. And sure enough, it did right smack where it's supposed to. So, and, and that's uh, interesting because we really rally to start. I don't know it's going to start today or tomorrow, but it came right in on target where it's supposed to. And we really did, weren't so, down that much, right? We only just we only came back to that area, so that's intriguing, right? That we actually got a minus two hundred tick, right? Well, that's the minimum. This one we had uh, on uh, two days ago was five hundred seventeen on the close. Right. Okay. Oh, had, oh, oh, I get yeah, it. I get it. You're talking about the close. Okay, I get it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. You have to do the close. That's when. Whenever I bails out on the close, that's usually a good sign, kind of an exhaustion sign. So if you're bullish, you kind of want to see that. Kind of people just give up and and I, I guess puke their lungs, or whatever. And that tick on the close kind of shows that. So everybody was kind of barfing on the close on that day. Uh, then yesterday the market's down a little bit, but but volume dropped off. We also noticed that day on volume, so t this would be Tuesday's trading, really, you had kind of a selling climax, which I pointed out there. As selling climax is usually when volume jumps about 30% or more. For the, uh, the higher percentage jump in volume, the more climatic that move is. And if you get up around 30% or thereabouts, it's usually kind of an exhaust move to the downside. And that usually works pretty well to the upside and downside. So Tuesday of this week, he kind of had an exhaustion move. He had a panic trend reading close, and he had a panic tick reading close. And you're coming right smack into support. So he had quite a bit of evidence that the market was probably going to make a low uh, right around that 405 area. Uh, so it worked out 
luckily in my favor. And so it I, I can't talk. I've been long yeah, for yeah. a while. That's pretty intense. So, yeah, so it's, it's working out. Now we're getting a, a decent sign of strength off that, you know, and um, it's, it's hard to say how high is high, but. Uh, we got time. We can jump to uh, chart three. No, we definitely. Are. We're, I'm gonna. We're gonna do the next segment too. Is that cool, Tim? I, I just. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, we can do that. Can we stay well, on we this can one talk for more a second? About this chart, if you want to yeah. ask questions about it. Yeah, I do. So. Okay. When you have something like this, right? You know, because this is only a short pullback anyway, right? So. Right. When you have something like this, is this something that you think that you're gonna have a? A bullish scenario for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. You know what? What is what is the number on this thing? No, I'm not. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking what this whole thing is. If you if you look at the bigger charts, um, I should have threw over a monthly chart. But the, basically, we've been in trading range since last May. Yes, we, we have. Bang around right. the trading range, and that uh, top of that trading range on the monthly chart is around. 405, 410 on the SPYs. Okay. And I'm thinking we're building cause, I guess. You might, you know, we're building a trading range to either break up or break down. Okay. And my, my work says we're probably going to go, if you measure the top of that trading range to the bottom of that trading range, I forget what the number is, but, you know, you come out with a figure that points you back to 470. Well, 470 happens to be the January 2022 high. And uh, that's probably where we're going to go. Are we going to break above that 470? Um, don't know. That's too far yeah, so ahead. That's it. So I, I see what you you're know. saying. I'm mocking up another spy chart as we're doing this, Tim. So I see what you're saying, that this consolidation, there's no doubt, has been going on for a long time. And you're, I, I get what you're saying here. You, so it would be like the 417 where you jump the creek again, right? And then that's like, okay, right. you, exactly. Okay, cool. I see that. I just mocked it up for you. Interesting. Okay. Right. Well, if you, if you do it monthly, it looks closer. To, if you kind of just take the closes, it comes in around uh, four, four, five, four, ten area. Okay. Uh, one second. Take the I'm doing that too. Around four, yep, I see it. So I'm thinking four, five, four, ten is closer. Okay. Cool. Two, stay right, two, Tim. Two. Stay right there. We're coming right back, folks. Our phone number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Get on, Mr. Tim Ord. You can reach Tim at Ord dash dash Oracle dot com. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 524. Nasdaq's up 289. S&Ps are up 79. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And stay tuned, folks, because our man, Mr. Tim Ord, is going to be uh, doing a workshop for us uh, pretty soon. And uh, Tim Ord, uh, should want to go to the next shot right now? Yeah, but we can. We yeah, we can uh, do. Uh, we'll, we'll stay on the S&Ps for right now. Okay. Um, the only reason I'm bringing this up, I'm not putting the horse, uh, the horse before the cart, but if the market, you can see where the trading range, this is a weekly chart of the uh, SPX. Yep. And, and it goes all the way back to, to uh, 2019. And so basically you can see the trading range we've been in since last May. We kind of just flipped sideways here. Yes. And we're at, I, I, we got, I drew a kind of a, a yeah, you're right, about uh, 2417 or about uh, 4170, I guess, on the SPYs is where a trend line lies. That's, in my opinion, is kind of a neckline right there. Okay. And uh, my opinion, we're going to jump through that neckline probably right. with a sign of strength. We're, we're going to break out. The only reason why I say that is to go to the uh, um, second chart up from the bottom. Okay. Which is... I see the SPX VIX ratio. Okay. If you notice, uh, the, the market pretty much has kind of traded sideways since uh, uh, looks like about February. If you notice, the SPX uh, or SPX VX ratio made a higher high. Uh, you see that little trend line right there. Yes, I do. And so, okay, so in order for, if that's still making higher highs, a lot of times that'll lead the SPX. We don't make a higher high. What you don't want to see is if uh, this market starts to rally and say we break above the um, just round off number 4,100 on the um, SPX and you, you rally higher and that ratio makes a lower high, that's when you get trouble. In other words, the VIX is starting to go up as the S&Ps are going up. And that's a bearish sign for the market. It, I do this on a weekly time frame because 
Can you can you just run through that again for us, Tim? Because I had the wrong chart up. Just on the SPX and the and the VIX, I got it up right now. All right. So when the SPX when the SPX is going up and the VIX is going up, that's a bearish sign. Yes. And so on a daily chart, you get a lot of whipped out. Uh, you get too many whipsaws to really get an accurate reading what's going on. So I flipped to a weekly chart. Okay. That's the reason why I use a weekly chart. It kind of smooths out all that stuff, and you don't get these all these false signals. Yes. But if you go back in time and look what happened in the past, if you look at the 2020 area. Okay. Or area, uh, yeah, 20, we had that big uh, crash in, in yes. March of 2020. I see it, yeah. Well, the S&Ps were making higher highs. It's kind of hard to see. But if you look at the ratio, which is the next chart below the SPX, it made a, it made a much lower high. Right. And that was your warning sign that the market wasn't going to go up. And that same thing happened back in uh, it looks like about December, January, or December of 2021, January 2022. Same thing happened. You made all time highs in January. Okay. But if you look at the ratio. It made a lower high. If, and if you can see that. I can. No, I can see it. We can see that pretty clearly. Right. right. Yeah. So here, we're, we're still making higher highs, even though the S&P is making higher highs. So we may rally. What I'm thinking is if we do get back to the old highs up, up around that uh, 4770 area, which is basically the January 2022 high, and we see a divergence on the weekly time frames where the S&Ps are making higher highs and the ratio has made a lower high. And I think I bet that happens at the old highs. Okay which is up around 470, which is a long ways up from here. Which is going to blow some uh, minds. So, yeah, no, I know. But, but hey, yeah. listen, for you know, for investors or traders, it's awesome. Right. No, there's no doubt, man. Right, right. yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's a good return. Right. And, you know, if you get through this uh, this trend line here, what you need, you know, that, that 4,100 4, area, let's call it where that trend line lies, yeah. you're going to need a sign of strength. Right. Well, that's still sitting in front of us. We're sitting right on that line right now. Here right. Right. And so, in my opinion, you're going to see a sign of strength here, probably in, in May, because May starts next Monday, anyhow. Yeah, or, and or you know, it's so wild is that, of course, the the saying "sell in May and go away," and this will be just the opposite. Right. Yeah, right. That, that, I yeah, can... so it might be good. So we may rally up to a high, and and maybe we keep going. I don't know. Yeah. But right now, my intermediate term stuff, at least so far, there's no divergence present, and the uh, the VIX or the SPX. The VIX ratio has made a higher high, suggesting the S&Ps will make a higher high. And so, in my opinion, you should be long right here. Um, and so, that's, a, what, 70 points. So, that's a good, what, 15 or 12 percent rally from here or something like that. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. No, it's a big number, man. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah, it's a, it's a big number. So, that would be interesting to see, you know, if that works out. But with, you know, with technical analysis, you know, sometimes you're getting, you're getting going down this road, and sometimes things change. So there's no guarantee we're going to get back to the old highs. But right now, it looks favorable. Uh, oh, listen, change, hey, you, you might, you might get me changing so. my head, man. I like it. <laughs> That's right. I yeah. like it. I like so, it. But, you know, tops are really hard to figure out. And this is what I've kind of been working on for the last couple of years, and I'm yes. starting to hone it down. And it, it, if you go back in time and use that method, I went back all the way to 2000, and it, it does a pretty well a good job of uh, picking out highs along, you know, worthwhile highs. Not right. Just near well, you know what's highs. interesting is that, you know, so, my, my take is that when this dollar gets weak, the market loves it. And the dollar's having a hard time holding price. And now, with that said, that's why I want to flip to the gold market because... You know, that that could, I mean, I was thinking the dollar was going to do a counter trend bounce to 106. But if the dollar gives it up and breaks this low, I can see the market going and gold going. So I'm going to pull up this XAU chart. Is that cool? Yeah, we'll do that. But okay. it's, um, yeah, the XAU chart, but with what the middle chart is, is the monthly silver gold ratio. And I took it back as far as I could, which yes. is uh, about 1995. And this this is a monthly chart, so these signals are not meant to be like one or two weeks long. These right. signals are, are, are big signals, um, and I, I and what I have a three part signal on this. The bottom window is the percent volume. Uh, the next one up is the rate of change, and uh, one above the uh, 
monthly silver gold ratio is the RSI. When two of those three get in bullish territory, I consider that a signal. Okay. So some some signals, all three of them got triggered, but you got to at least have two of them to get triggered. Yes. And the last one we had in uh, August of last year got triggered. So this signal right now uh, is you know close to nine months old and it's still in force. But the previous signals, I, I measured the length of how much the the rally lasted, I guess you might say. Well, the one in um, 2003, that was a 90% gain. The one in 2008, that was a 383% gain. The next one was 120% gain. The one uh, 100% gain. So anyhow, I said, well, yeah, those are good least, gains up in the top, right. So if this signal is 100%, then XAU should go to uh, to uh, around 200. I may do more, um, but probably not much less. Uh, so these signals last a while. So, yeah, the monthly signal is going to buy signals since last August, and we're not near done with it yet. Yeah, and the XAU right now is a 134, folks. Well, listen, Tim, this is a pleasure, man. Look forward to speaking to you uh, next Thursday. And, folks, don't forget, you can uh, reach Tim at ord-oracle.com. And as I said, Tim's going to be doing a workshop for us in the near future. Tim, thanks so much. Have a great one and a safe one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.